right away I just want to give you a little bit of um, context about the framework of today so this morning we're going to have several presentations about 20 minutes long each um, from some different folks in the community who have been dealing with these issues for a long time to just um, share updates and give a larger context for what's going on <laughs> Mai ke kūpuna a ka mākua, a ke ka maiki, ka ōpio. Aloha mai a kākua Pauloa. Aloha. Aloha. Awau, ke kahi wahi mo ōpuna, no ka lālani ohana, ku uewe me ku uivi ma keia mo kupuni nei o Maui nui a Kamalala Awalu. Ia aina o kulua, ia aina noho i o ihi kapalau maewa. Ko o mo, mo o ku au hau, pā no i ka aina o hono ko hau. Au au he keiki no ka mo, mo o puna, he mo o puna no hoi no ka ohana o pali, o ia hoi o pali o kawe loa. O mākou ke kahi lālani ohana no ka wahine koa lāua o komoku. A o ko mākou pilina ohana no ia aina nei o ia no o pali mā, o ke ahi mā, o li maha i mā. O koa ma, o wahine ho o kai ma, a o lono ma, a o kamoku, a me kahu moku ma, a kela no na lala ni ohana, a ka ue pili nei, makai ao ao o ku ohana, he mo opuna ho ike ia no ka ohana o ke aloha a me ke pohoni no kumoku puni nui o Hawaii. Hānau ia nō wau maka aina o o ahu. A he kei ki wāwai pono hele ke ia, mana moku puni apau i kuu wā kamali i ana. So my experiences have taken me throughout the pai aina. And I'm fortunate to have... to have been given the opportunity to speak our language. Mahalo, mahalo nui ku u ohana no ka aino ni ihau. Mahalo nui ya lako ka lako malama ani eu. No ka lako ho kikina ano no eu, ho ikei ka ani eu. E ho oku paa, maka olalo mako hine o ko kaawa aina aloha. My beginnings in doing anything in our our Kaunaka community Having been raised by my kupuna, I'm fortunate that, um, as I heard in the story of uh, Palikapu's story, to be raised with certain kuleana. My kuleana was a little different though. I was the sides of my family. The other side, my Pake side, I didn't go into my Pake genealogy. Uh, because that has its own time and a place. But on both sides of the family, being raised by my elders meant that I would be given a lot and a lot would be expected of me at some point in my life. I was raised to respect my kupuna, obviously because I was raised by them, but to also be their, their servant. And so everything that my kupuna needed, I eventually would be look to to either fulfill or to to make sure that I tended to their needs. Can everybody hear me in the back? Mahalo. No need to ipuho o leleleo. I also want to make sure that 
I specifically say, especially to you young people in the room, leadership starts with you. <coughs> Set aside all of the external factors, leadership starts with you. Uh, my dear friend, Kawaiki Olores, who <laughs> took me to event after event after event that concerned our kanaka in the community. It could have been a protest, it could have been a march, it could have been a vigil, it could have been, you name it, under the sun. And I was taken. And I would ask the questions, what are we going to do? And the response would be, what are you asking me these dumb kind questions for? Hamau ya waha, kulikuli oiko waha. And just be ready. Little did I know that I would eventually find myself oli, hula, go up mauka or go makai, gather, learn to make lei and do different things and I'm not necessarily good at some of those things like making lei. I can, but I'm not as skilled as others. But the main thing is that I know how. Little did I know that one day I would be required to take everything that I ever experienced and apply it. And when I say apply it, I'm not saying that learning to dance hula, or learning to chant, or learning how to make a lay directly taught me how to think about when it came to malama ivi kupuna. But it gave me some points of reference and some framework to remind me on how to have some basic understanding so that I can analyze my situation, analyze the context of what I was going to experience, and then hopefully have some sort of logic that from a Kanaka worldview can make sense. Notice I said, can make sense. It may not make sense for everybody. As Kanaka, Ideally, we connect on our culture. We connect through culture, we connect through language. We have a cumulative history as to how our people have gotten into where we are now today. So that we have to have this kind of conference. That's, that's the sobering part, is that we have to actually come together for this kind of conference. Yesterday, we went out to Honokahua. Mahalo to the leadership of Ke'eau Moku Kapu for standing firm, for being the source to, to go to. When we were in school at Kamehameha, and when I graduated from Kamehameha in 1990, I went on to the University of Hawaii at Manoa. Those are the names, though, among some of the names that were our heroes. Even Lynette Cruz, people on the forefront of doing things in our community. And there are many others. I may not mention all of their names today, but I remember being that age and those names were the ones that we heard. Those names were the ones that we looked to. My name isn't worth much of anything if I don't avail myself to some level of kuleana. So currently, the kuleana that I hold, um, one hat, I give uh, acknowledgement to the Office of Hawaiian Affairs for taking me on to continue to do my work. Uh, I used to teach for 13 years at Halalokai Public Charter School, teaching K through 12. I moved on and continued working, teaching in the Halipa'ahau. And mahalo anui to the Office of Hawaiian Affairs for believing in my work and allowing me to continue my work. Mahalo also to the Office of Hawaiian Affairs for not forcing me to step away from the Borough Council. Um, I remain on the council. This is my 10th year in service and uh, my experiences are a bit different from what has been shared previous uh, by previous speakers. My experience has been greatly diverse as well. On the island of Oahu, 
I can't necessarily say that we are without our issues. We heard the, the issue, the glaring issue of Kuayaha'o Church. And the fact that it's Kanaka looking at Kanaka across the table. Now forgive me when I say this, but sometimes when I look back at the, my understanding of issues and struggle, especially when it comes to Evie, some of the worst examples are when it comes between Kanaka and Kanaka. And I'm not ashamed to say it because it's a truth. Or at least that's the truth that I have experienced. It is the most difficult thing, isn't it, Kala'i? When we sit across our Kanaka and we cannot build a bridge, we can't find that bridge. So I say to you, all of you in the room, opportunities like this allow us to convene. They allow us to bring our minds and our hearts together. Our mo'oku auhau, our mo'aukala, our genealogy and our history, our olelo, our language. These are the things that we must be absolutely familiar with so that when we find ourselves across the sea of divide, that we still know how to come back and we still know how to connect with one another. I can't say to you that the rest of what I'll say during my time sharing up here will be something that everyone will be in accord with. But I can say that it's what I've experienced. So today, um, I want you to take home that I came saying that while the borough council, the laws that created it, the government that it's housed under, um, it may not necessarily be our immediate preference. It may not necessarily be what we feel is ideal. It may not necessarily be what we feel was created by or for us. It may not be a whole lot of things. But I found a way, at least for me, to make it work. Sadly though, um, our Koeha'o Church issue is one that remains rather beyond the scope of what I found success with for several reasons. But um, from the beginning, that issue of Koyaha'o on many sides and, and, and multiple factors, it contributed to leading up to the situation that is in now. And it's like the Konane board. You have to be on both sides, not only on this side, but every other side. If you make this move, this happens. If you make that move, that happens. If you don't make this move, you walked away from potential what could happen here. But then again, if you chose this move, could have worse implications for you. So how do we make it work? What I found that works for me is that uh, um, if I were to as humbly as I could, if I were to say anything that has come about during the time of my leadership on the Borough Council, it is by making sure that we, the Council, get behind the descendants. Now again, it hasn't, it hasn't found its way to the most positive fruition for Koyaha'o Church, but for many other issues that have come the way of the O'ahu Island Borough Council, getting behind the descendants amplified the voices of the people that came forward. Coupled along with that was the need to be able to say it from the, the position of being the chair, that it's not my position nor the council's position for you to determine who you are. You who come forward saying who you are by showing your mo'oku auhau to the State Historic Preservation, Preservation Division is, in my um, analysis of it, it's simply saying aloha. This is who I am. I acknowledge to you who I am. No matter what even the paper says, the fact that you come forward saying this is who I am puts everybody else on alert. The whole process of a recognition and whether you get cultural descendancy recognition or lineal descendancy recognition is a matter of life in the Western way.
Kanaka way, I tell you my mo'oku au hau, you listen to what I say, and you say, ah, mahalo. The person who ho'opili mea ai, does anybody know, mapopo ni ya'uko kamana unu ikala anu mea? Ho'opili mea ai. Ho'opili mea ai is when you attach yourself on to something or someone, and you say, oh yeah, I'm related. But ho'opili mea ai means that you didn't necessarily have kuleana to say you were related. Kind of maha oi. To put yourself and connect to who and who and who, and you were really, truly who you were. Can't help you, personally. Can't help you. If you hope you me ai, that's your kuleana. If you wanted to be maha oi, that's up to you. You're going to have to deal with the kupuna if they should decide to come visit you. Hope you get plenty room in your hale. <laughs> and hope you can feed them and malama them. I kind of say this lightly, but um, it's kind of true. When we cannot manipulate the situation through the checks and balances that it currently exists through the system known as the Borough Council, recognition, and all these kind of things, we only have our spiritual belief and our faith that our pule will carry us through the most challenging of times. So nowadays, I try to walk away from the kumuhina 10, 15, 20 years ago that used to walk into certain meetings, call people fornicators at the meeting and verbally assault and accost people because I try to incorporate a little bit different strategy now. <laughs> um, so once again, a highlight of being on the Barrow Council it's important for each council and the leadership to determine that they will be an element of support for descendants, those coming forward. Again, not to determine who you are, but to say, yes, we see you. And that, yes, we're going to get behind you participating in this process. And that it's our responsibility to say to people who want to develop that if you think, as I have said to developers, we will not support anything that you want unless the descendants say, we support it. So there's a difference. My predecessors on the Borough Council um, on, for Oahu have sometimes taken that very independent stance where, thank you very much for your comment, descendants. Thank you very much for your mana'o, but we have our own mana'o. And that is not the way I and nor this current council do things. And also, by the way, our current council incorporates Olelo much in our daily transaction. <coughs> so it's irrelevant whether the people Maopopo what we say. It's relevant that we speak in the language of our kupuna that we are speaking about. So that we are required to at least be in Kanaka mindset and heart set. Ah, Pali Kapu, you are back. I wanted to give a prop to you and so that you could hear it. I told the audience, it's names like yours that were our heroes when we were young, like these guys over here that came to class. So mahalo to their kumu for bringing them here. Mahalo to you for also standing firm and being strong and be, being an example of, of the passion and the fire, the commitment, the dedication. I get to be in the same with you, room with you today to say that to you. Because people like you who went forward were the example for us to go forward. And hopefully, out of the young people that have come today, someone of you will be the one to go forward. You can read along with me in English. I love, honor, and cherish my land, beautiful Hawaii in all her astonishing wonder, the living earth of Mother Haumea and the vast ocean of Kanaloa. To the next generation, step up and out. Children of this beloved land, stand tall and unite and move forward together. Rise, everyone. It is time to awaken all of our beloved descendants of our nation, our island people of esteemed and honored Hawaii. Stand as Kanaka. Remember your heritage. Stand for our beloved flag, symbol of our nation. Be steadfast and vigilant always for our cause in defending and loving our land. We are ever grateful for the legacy left to us, 
for our Hawaiian way of life. And I'm going to insert right here. Part of that legacy is our iwi kupuna. Important to remember, and I'm, I'm very thankful that we were able to observe that here. For example, somebody whispered to me, Oh, Hina, can you, come do the, can you help do the opening? Pule. Of course I can. Anybody who understands leadership knows that if you're asked to lead something, you step up to the plate. Whether you felt you were prepared or not, you step up to the plate and you do it. But, the mana o maikai prevailed. And even though I have genealogical tie to this aina, it went to a rightful person who should, because that individual res resides on aina and lives and breathes on aina. So just like that understanding, there are times where we are the lahui and we have to raise the lahui flag to defend our iwi kupuna. And there are certain times where we have to know, okay, here's the first line. That's the immediate ones who claim immediate recognition to these barrels, and then the ones behind and the ones behind. And then the lahui after that. Have to know our rank and pecking order sometimes. But that's part of this melee. If you understand your culture, you will understand when it's time for everybody to hold the lahui flag or when it's time to hold manawi nui, be patient. And those who are rightful, close descendancy, you have to step up and out. Ever enduring is the wisdom of our ancestors, the treasure trove for future generations. Blessed from the heavens upon high, driving and forging us onward and upward. Fight on, hold fast, and never give up. And in this mele, I acknowledge Queen Lili Uokalani, who was a symbol of leadership for our people.